Homecoming comes to Fort Collins, and the Rams, about two hours ago, led by their first-year head coach, Jay Norvell, headed to the field, and here they are. Colorado State on a homecoming night in front of what should be a big and loud crowd, but Utah State is waiting. At the foot of the Rocky Mountains, college football on CBS Sports Network is presented by Geico. We're in the Mountain West, Utah State, Colorado State on a simply gorgeous Colorado evening. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Taylor. Sherry Burris joins us shortly. Emotional wins are a currency that is so valuable in this sport, and both these teams have them in their last games. Oh, man. They ended four-game losing streaks, both of these teams, and the, the relief was palpable. Winning solves everything. Rich, here's the deal. Both these teams looking to turn the corner. Somebody's going to walk out of here tonight on a two-game win streak with the meat and bulk of the conference schedule ahead of them. The win for Colorado State was at Nevada. That's Jay Norvell's old team. That was emotional. And Avery Morrow on the ground led the way. He certainly did. He led the best rushing attack the Rams have had all season. He and that offensive line are going to be a key storyline tonight because they've got a new quarterback under center. Yeah, how about this? A redshirt freshman walk-on, Giles Pooler, gets the start. Yeah, he's the third starter at the quarterback position in as many weeks. His decision-making and ball security are going to be key. The win for Utah State was against Air Force. That was a huge win, and what a huge night it was for Cooper Lega, who's their quarterback. Lega's legs have been the difference. His mobility's really opened things up in both the run and pass game. He's led the two best offensive outputs in the last two weeks. It didn't hurt that he was throwing a lot of footballs Brian Cobb's way. Man, Cobbs has elite ball skills. Eight targets, eight catches. Had a career-high day in both receptions and receiving yards. He's going to give that Ram secondary all they can handle. All Blake Anderson did in his first year coming over from Arkansas State is win the Mountain West, beat San Diego State in that championship game. Jay Norvell walked into Reno six years ago for a program that was in disarray. And boy, did he turn it around quickly. And that is what they're hoping for here in Fort Collins. Henry Cattleman will kick it off for the Rams. Huge tailgate scene. And many of those fans are still pouring in. A line drive kick that's going to sail right through the end zone. Papa John's brings you our starting lineups tonight. Logan Bonner, who was so good at quarterback last year, is out for the season. But the last two games from this guy have been splendid. He's been absolutely amazing. 13 rushes for 76 yards and a touchdown, averaging almost six yards a carry a week ago. Five of his 13 rushes, Rich, last week were first downs or touchdowns. The Rams have to keep Lagaz's legs in check. Got company, Calvin Tyler, and they run tempo. So we'll keep an eye on that. That could stress this Colorado State defense. This is Lega, who is a great runner. And he's got nine yards as he pulls it and keeps it. And the men up front, in particular, Alfred Edwards, important. He's going to be big. This line is finally getting healthy. Lega again breaks a tackle, spins away, and a hard-earned one yard and a first down. Now, back of this defense, Colorado State's had some good moments. Their emotional leader is Henry Blackburn. There's no question about that. He's the guy that stirs this drink. <laughs> this drink is getting stirred. A flag is down. <laughs> this drink is really getting stirred. The tempo that Utah State wants to use in this game is like ultra tempo. It's deadly. It puts so much pressure. Outside, number 42, defense. Lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, first down. Remember what Freddie Banks, the defense coordinator, told us yesterday? Hey, we just got to get our, our spikes in the ground when they run Temple. We got to get lined up. Get lined up first, and then the play call was key to them being able to be successful tonight. That's a, a five-yard pickup on the penalty. First and five. Lega pulls it, fires it, sideline, caught there. Brian Cobbs is first of what will probably be many tonight 
out to the 47-yard line. That's a first down and a seven-yard gain. Well, he comes from good bloodlines. His dad, Robert, won two national championships back at Penn State at the 80s. And if Brian Cobbs keeps this up, Rich, he's going to be a Sunday NFL player for sure. Already another first down at the 47-yard line. First carry for Calvin Tyler Jr. And he busts it loose. He's inside the 40 inside the 35 to the 34 yard line Blackburn made the stop that backside tackle Jacob South had the key block on that counter play and Utah State moving at will here early 18 yards on that carry and moving quickly again high tempo offense Lega with time hit as he throws ball is loose that's intercepted Cameron Carter up the sideline with the interception and the defense that scored two touchdowns last week has a big play to start tonight rich one of the things that this utah state coaching staff was worried about was the pass rush and coming off that outside edge was muhammad kamara and that defensive front is the strength of this team he beats jacob south who had just made a great block on the running play and an early turnover early gives some life to this crowd and this is exactly what the Rams wanted to do defensively there early 39 yard return by Carter on the interception and they're inside Utah State's 30 yard line at the 29 and here comes Giles Pooler the walk on the kid from Fort Collins a red shirt freshman who impressed his coaching staff in spring ball and in the fall. And on first down, this may be a throw. Caught, Vivens out of bounds. Tory Horton, who was a quarterback in high school at times, with a strike to Vivens. How about the play call here by Matt Mummy? The reverse pass back to Vivens. What an aggressive play call after the first down. They are trying to strike quickly after the sudden change. First and goal. They're inside the 10 and inside the Verizon red zone. Bivens picks his way back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Bo Miley made the stop for Utah State. And right now, it's Utah State's defense sort of on their heels. Yeah, and this is going to be an interesting matchup tonight because the Aggies up front from a rushing standpoint giving up over 200 yards per game but take a look at this the fewest drives in the country among them Colorado State yet here they are here they are for this the seventh time and this is game number six and a timeout Colorado State has used their first timeout of the half 30 seconds you can see Jay Norvell just telling his redshirt freshman hey calm down <laughs> we're all right and I know this, look, hey, this is really something. Sherry Burris, just a, a unique sequence here that has Giles Pooler starting this game. And it's a rare opportunity for Colorado State quarterback Giles Pooler Rich. He's now the third starting quarterback in three weeks for the Rams. But as you guys mentioned it, what an opportunity to do this as a walk-on freshman. This is a football milestone for him in personal. Pooler played high school football in Fort Collins, and his mom is a journalism professor here at CSU. And guys, I spoke to parents Sarah and Todd, and they're, they said they're a little nervous, but Giles told them he is ready for this opportunity. Oh, she's ready right now, Jerry. <laughs> Second down goal from the 11. That handoff going to Avery Morrow, left side, and Morrow slams forward for five yards. This is going to bring up an interesting third down and goal from the six. As we've noted, they haven't been in the red zone, our Verizon red zone, very often. And so that, that, that playbook has been relatively untouched. And you've got a, a quarterback that's making his first start, red shirt freshman here with a big moment. Play call and execution are going to be interesting to see what Mummy dials up. I think something easy, high percentage. Pooler, time, fires, end zone, just over the hands of Torrey Horton. Horton got a hand on it. It was a high throw, and the field goal unit's coming on. Yeah, I didn't think it was a good decision either. They were running a mesh concept where the two inside slot receivers cross, 
Instead, he throws high into double coverage instead of being patient. That's a telltale sign of a young quarterback in a big moment. Big moment for Michael Boyle, certainly his last time out in the waning moments in Reno to beat Nevada. And you can see he hasn't kicked a lot in his career, just two of three. One of those two was a game winner, though. So he was money when it mattered. Up and good. Already, Colorado State's defense has forced a turnover. And the offense turns it into three points. Cameron Carter. Camara with the hurry. Carter with the pick. And Boyle with three points. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. By Verizon, the network America relies on. And by the new two for $5 menu at Sonic. Only at Sonic. Homecoming, Parents Weekend, a 5 o'clock kick for Colorado State and an excellent start, a 3-0 lead over Utah State. Crowd still filing in. A lot of energy in this building. A lot of wind, too, as the sun's gone down. The wind's really picked up. Jordan Whitmore watches that one sail over his head. Aaron Taylor, what you got for keys to the game? Well, I think for the Aggies offensively, they want explosive plays. Blake Anderson hit us over and over and over, so Tyler's had a 19-yard run. Defensively, Banda, the defensive coordinator, wants him to puncture and penetrate the line of scrimmage. For Colorado State, even though it's the air raid, they want to play small ball. Time of possession, keeping the ball in their possession, converting third downs, and defensively, and we've already seen this, the Rams want to control the line of scrimmage. With Camaras, sack and, and strip, with the ensuing return, that set up the first score. That was a great start. Lega, lateral, Vaughn the catch. Great pursuit, and he's wrapped up and thrown out of bounds. Drew Kulik from his linebacker spot, and right away, Utah State lined up. Three receivers to the top of the screen. They like him on that right side. And you see Colorado State a little unclear about what to do there. They'll go back to that. Quick screen, Vaughn again, and again. This time he escapes. Now we'll see if he stepped out of bounds anywhere. They mark that football just short of the first down, right at the 34-yard line. Utah State's wide receivers get a lot of work. I mean, this is an 11-personnel team, meaning one running back, one tight end, and three wide receivers, and they keep them on the field because tempo is most important. Lega keeps it, has the first down. He really is a different quarterback than Logan Bonner in terms of mobility. And, and what I'm surprised by is that the Rams don't have a player responsible for Lega. That's twice he's run the keeper where he's pulled the football and picked up big yardage. They call that a spy, right? Well, you, you got to have a defensive end or a linebacker, somebody responsible for that outside gap. That hole open quickly for Calvin Tyler Jr. And he has seven yards out to the 48-yard line. It was a little messy, but to Tyler's credit, he got north and south and with a nice gain. Tyler again, this time across midfield. And that's good enough for a first down. Four more yards. Man, the tempo and the pace right now is, is lightning fast. It certainly is. And what I like is that they're also featuring the run game. This has really opened up, Rich, what they've been able to do. And they're still struggling to rush the football. But these last two weeks, that hadn't been the case. Lega, this time he gets it off cleanly. And it's caught there. Brian Cobbs along the sideline. Cobbs, the transfer from Maryland, is their feature wide receiver. And that guy, Chigozi Anusium, will be on him most of the night. Second down three. Lega, quick game there. McGriff, Justin McGriff, the catch. Sticks will move. And Utah State on the move. And because that ball was over here on the left side, that allowed Colorado State to make a quick exchange of defensive players as they rotate personnel in and out. This tempo really stresses the conditioning of the defense. Eighth play of the drive. Another lateral. Again, Vaughn. 
And again, he's met by a trio of Rams. And you see the Rams are wholesale changing again what their defensive personnel is. And that stop on first down really makes it hard to run tempo for this offense. Anthony Tucker, their offensive coordinator, told us first down for tempo teams, it's paramount that you have a positive play. And it's not just the first down play, it's the first first down that you get that's necessary also. Tyler empties the backfield. Legault looks the other way. Again to Vaughn. And again, he's hit, stays on his feet, gets to the 31. Gain of four. It's going to bring a third down and about seven up. It's been interesting. The Rams look a little disheveled at times defensively. And where that's showing up, Rich, is missed tackles. Utah State is so talented on the perimeter. If you miss a tackle, that could be a home run. And those are just the sort of plays that Utah State would like to have. Not very good. It's been feast or famine for this offense. Last week in their game, their average distance to go on third down was 9.8 yards, and here it's third and long again. Lega in the pocket, fires to the sideline, caught by Buchanan, the tight end. Short of the first down, but he's close enough that you might think about a fourth and four here. And it was Daquan Jackson on the pursuit there that had a nice open field tackle. And yeah, this is Utah State, man. They're hitting the gas pedal, and I like it. <laughs> yeah. All right, fourth down. Eleventh play of this drive, which has eaten up only like two minutes of the clock. And if you're Colorado State, you must stay on sides here. Anytime it's fourth or third or fourth with less than five, you got to hold your water and not jump off sides. Yeah, they're trying to get them to jump off sides, and that's great discipline by the Rams. Good effort there by Utah State, but Colorado State wasn't falling for it. Freddie Banks said this week, we're not falling for the double clap from that quarterback, and they didn't. Life comes at you fast. So does Utah State. <laughs> that was an up-tempo drive, but it stalled. And Connor Coles, who has a big leg from 45 yards here, his longest year is 50. We are at altitude. And he hits it pretty well, but he pushed it right. That's his first miss of the season. And right now, homecoming is going quite well, if you ask Jay Norvell. Rams lead it. A 3-0 start for Colorado State. Mountain West standings. Boy, right now, if you're Colorado State, and you're it seems like everybody's still in every race. It's wide open this year for the Mountain West. And what's really interesting, we'll talk about this more in the game, is that there's no real elite quarterback in the conference, but Chevin Cordero at San Jose State is certainly someone to keep an eye on because the Spartans are looking good. Yes, they are. They may be the most consistent team in the conference right now. All right, Giles Pooler, drive number two. On the ground, Avery Morrow. Morrow, second effort, going to get six, maybe seven. Papa Johns brings you the starting lineup. How much of the playbook does Pooler have? It's been condensed. I mean, they're going to run what they run. He's a smart player. He understands this offense and what they can do. And what Mummy told us is that because he knows so much of the offense, it really helps him because he can check in and out of stuff. The air raid ideally would like a quarterback that on 60% of the snaps can call things at the line of scrimmage. I don't think Pooler's there yet, but he's got a good understanding of this offense. That's something that Carson Strong did so well at Nevada for Mummy and for Norvell. Morrow breaks a couple tackles, somehow stays on his feet, and he's got the first down at the 40-yard line. That's a heck of a run. All right, we've seen him already throw, but he likes it when they throw it to him, and that's Torrey Horton. Yeah, Torrey Horton's arguably the best wide receiver in the Mountain West Conference this year. He leads the conference in almost 100 yards per game receiving. The coaches raved about his focus and mentality and how good of a practice player he was. That needs to translate here tonight when the ball's in the air. Move, oh. Movement, but no flag. Yep, center should have snapped it there when he's in the neutral zone. Puller winds up and throws a fastball to Morrow. Makes the catch, but he's right at the line of scrimmage. 
stress points for Utah State defensively. Hunter Reynolds, though, at that safety spot, really experienced and good. Boy, is he rich. He's the undisputed leader, both on and off the field. Everybody rallies and relies upon him. He's the most stable player they've got defensively and really stepped up from a leadership standpoint. Facing the air raid offense of Colorado State. Second down and 10. This is Morrow. And this will bring up third down and 10, and not really where you want a walk on redshirt freshman quarterback in down and distance. Utah State defensively on their defensive line is getting some penetration and getting inside and it's going to be a tough decision for Matt Mummy. You've got a young quarterback. It's third and ten. This is an obvious passing situation. Do you go conservative with a draw or a screen or do you let this kid put the football in the air and try to pick up the first down midfield. Yeah, this is one of the many numbers that is just not great for Colorado State last in the country in third down conversion. Utah State shows blitz. They bring four. Morrow can't get through that first level. It's a good play there by Patrick Joyner. One of the defensive ends along with Hunter Reynolds. Penetration kills the run game and it was an excellent job by Joyner of getting across the line of scrimmage. He's going to beat the center. The center wants to capture him and get his shoulder over the right side. But right there he goes back to the guard. Excuse me it was the left guard. But that is textbook defensive line play and that movement up front is what set everything up and is forcing this punt. Patty Turner, an Australian sophomore transfer from Nevada. Little end over end kick, fair catch called for and made by Utah State. They get it at their own 13. 3 0 Colorado State, homecoming night in Fort Collins. 3 0 Colorado State on top of Utah State. Utah State head coach Blake Anderson four years ago lost his wife to cancer. His father passed away about eight months after that. And this February he lost his son Kaysen who died by suicide. I mean that's a heavy burden for anybody let alone a head coach of a college football team. It's amazing how he's coping and his whole team is helping. It's unreal how everybody's rallied around him. And when we asked him how'd you get through this. What's the game plan to be able to deal with so much adversity. He said transparency. There were days at practice that I was crying and I need other coaches to step in. A bunch of us send songs or text messages different things to pick each other up. We're in this together. This is a community and a team based on chemistry and culture and we care and that's incredible because what he's been able to do is what his team's starting to do False and that's start. Going forward. number on offense number 61 five yard penalty first down. Yeah he said look you know what I'll be honest with you guys he said it's really hard to be vulnerable in front of your team and the moments that he has been vulnerable the assistant coaches the team the amount of texts that he gets from players on his team on a nightly basis it was incredible Rich, what really stood out to me and he was pretty candid with us he says I'm not going to lie there were times I thought about walking away but I just couldn't the throw incomplete flag down in the end zone. When we talked to defensive coordinator Freddie Banks he said he likes to give the games and the stunts on third downs to the defensive line coach and that's what they did there but it might First be too foul. much. Roughing the passer number two defense 15 yard penalty automatic first down. That's CJ on Yachi. They're going to come run here and he's going to come on a stunt and this is a very clean execution for the defensive line to run the tackle and exchange. But he hits him and falls on him and his weight gets on top of Lega at the end and that's where the flag is a violent hit and Lega whose head hit the back of the ground. It's probably going to tell his offensive line to step it up a little bit. more. Robert Briggs with the carry 
And he's out to the 25 yard line with more on Blake Anderson. Here's our Sherry Burris. Sherry? Well, guys, I was talking to quarterback Logan Bonner before the game. He's been with Coach Anderson since his Arkansas State days. He was telling us that Coach Anderson, as you mentioned, it does get emotional at practice. And the team is part of his family, and they try to uplift, uplift him. And Bonner is one of those guys, as you mentioned it, who is texting him every day, trying to really be a bright spot for Anderson as he's going through these tough times. All right, thank you, Sherry. Brandon Guzman with a, what almost was a late hit on Cooper Lega, who went into his slide after picking up a first down. Football sits at the 34 yard line. And that's at least the second first down that Lega has picked up with his legs. The Rams have to adjust because he's killing. And I think Anderson's upset there was no flag on that hit. Vaughn in motion. Lega looks at him and then fires up the field and throws short to McGriff. Did not catch it. It's incomplete. Now it's interesting because Lagas not necessarily a pure pocket passer. He's he's pretty good when he's throwing the football, but that's not necessarily his strength. These early hits that he's taking, he's not nearly as accurate as we saw in their game a week ago against Air Force. Second down, ten. This is Briggs bounces off a couple across the 45, 11 yards. And that's a first down. Just too many missed tackles. One. I mean, it's happening fast, but that's been the story. They've had guys in position, but the power running by both Tyler and Briggs proven to be a little much here for the Rams defensively. Utah State has run 20 plays already. They have nine first downs, and yet they trail in this game 3 0. This defense has done a great job of bending but not breaking. We've seen them on back to back drives to start this game getting run all up and down the field only to hold once with a turnover and second time with a missed field goal. Briggs with that carry. About four yards second and six. Lega looking right fire sideline. Wow that's a catch. Did Vaughn have a foot down. He yeah, did certainly did. And this is some of the ball skills that we saw from Brian Cobbs last week. The coaches really like Vaughn and are wanting him to step up and be a bigger part of this offense. Last week, four targets, four catches, and another great one there. And another first down. That's 10 already. Briggs, or Cobbs rather. And right now, the offense is humming. Colorado State though twice has been able to slow them down once they forced a field goal and that was wide right. Lega, time here. Uh -oh. That's McGriff. End zone. Got it. Touchdown. Utah State. Justin McGriff, third of the season. Those are the big play shots that this offense is known for they like to hit him deep and Justin McGriff is six foot six and he's going against Brandon Guzman who's only 5'11 who he used that seven inch advantage on a perfectly thrown football for the first Aggie touchdown of the night. Connor Coles for the extra point. That was important for the Aggies to finish the drive. That gives them some confidence and allows them to settle down. Cooper Lega, very nice on a nine play, 87 yard drive for six. Justin McGriff. And it's 7 3, Aggies. Justin McGriff with a great catch for a touchdown and a 7-3 lead. Marco's Pizza plays we love. Boy, I love some pizza too. Hey, here you're gonna see the safety. Henry Blackburn gonna come from the slot and blitz the quarterback. That means it's man coverage across the board. Lega recognizes that. He'll take that 101 deep shot all day long. The other safety late to get there. And McGriff, the big dude from Tampa, Goes up and gets that ball, and the Aggies are humming. Aggies have 160 yards of total offense, 10 first downs. They've run 24 plays already. 
that starts to show up and te test your depth in the second half. That means the Rams offense have to help. Them. Well this is a short little pooch kick and I think it bounced out of bounds. Yep. Flag comes down. So good field position now for Colorado State. It's interesting Blake Anderson's in charge of the special teams and he was trying to drop that ball in the hole and maybe get a freebie. And it's also I think an indicator that you don't mind that your team's going to start free kick out of bounds kick and take five yards to be added to the spot first down. Alabama Tennessee for those of you that were watching that game man what a game and it's over a 40 yard field goal to win it for Tennessee they take down number three Alabama 52 49. Congratulations Brian Jones you called it everything in my body said to pick Tennessee but it was like how do you pick against Alabama it's like in usual suspects how do you shoot the devil in the back what if you miss agent Kuyan? what if you miss boy I missed on that pick congratulations Tennessee <laughs> that's the insightful analysis we're looking for right there it's on the Mount Rushmore movies usual suspects the twist at the end oh my goodness Giles Pooler in case you're just joining us from that game the grit on his helmet kind of shows where he's come from Blake Anderson the Utah State head coach waiting for this conference with the officials the football sitting at the 37 yard line Jay Norvell in his first year it was odd to After see him in green the ball was touched by the receiving team who carried the ball out of bounds the ball will be at the 32 yard line first down. Ah, and that, was, that was their initial spot too and, and I thought that that's what it should have been and then they threw the, the five yards on the end and then they got to back together to discuss it and make sure that they got it right had the player not touched the football then yes it would have been moved up to the thirty five. Four receiver look Giles Pooler. And they're bringing pressure. Pooler's hit. Flags are down. Pooler is down. And that was MJ Tafisi leading the charge. That from Branda bringing up a cross dog blitz on the inside, but Utah State might have been offsides. Offside, number nine, defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, first half. Let's go down to Sherry Burris update on Utah State quarterback Cooper Lega. Sherry. Yeah guys I'm watching him after that last Utah State series. The quarterback went into the medical tent. It was only for a couple minutes. He's now out back in the quarterback huddle. He did get his left knee taped up. Pretty big cut there on his knee but everyone's giving him pounds high fives. He seems to be OK. Definitely something we're going to be watching for as the game goes on. All right. Thank you Sherry. Utah State up 7 3 Colorado State. More flags, more movement. False start, number 89. Offense, five yard penalty, first half. So you're Matt Mummy. You're one of the most creative offensive coordinators in the country. It's your first year here. You've already run through two freshman quarterbacks. This is your third. How do you get this offense and this young quarterback going? patient and, and you would hope that the run game would come to the rescue and get something going there but that just simply hasn't been the case they're averaging about three yards a carry and they need at least four and a half to five well they're trying on the ground right now AJ Vong Pachong gets Avery Morrow before he gets much yardage Morrow ran wild at Nevada 169 yards I don't know that he's going to have that type of success tonight against Utah State no and, and the Aggies to their credit are starting to figure some things out now they did an excellent job a week ago being able to stop that vaunted Air Force offense a very different style than they're used to but held them to basically half their season average Pooler fires it and it's caught that's Lewis Brown and Brown across midfield a big chunk play to the 41 of Utah State yeah that was Kaleo Nevis in coverage there one on one and he almost gets a hand on it right there but it's Lewis Brown who gets it and picks up the nice gain and that is a big confidence booster there for Pooler 25 yards final seconds first quarter Colorado State on the move Pooler Portland I'm not sure 
It was for Horton. Brown was in between. And it'll be second down and 10. Freshman starters on offense. This will keep a coach up at night. Oh, it was crazy, man. When we talked to Jay Norvell, he said, I've never, in as long as I've been coaching, had three true freshmen that started the football game for me, yet here we are. And I know if you're a Rams fan, you're worried about maybe how this year has started. But this is exactly the way that it looked at Nevada. I think that they cleaned this culture up a little bit with some of the guys that left, and that's going to help them. Morrow. Bong Pong Chong hits him and more of bus right through him. You don't see that very often. And that's a seven yard pickup. Hunter Reynolds made the stop. Yeah, when he, you can run through the arms of an A.J. Bong Pong, the second lead of the tackler on this team, you're running with some power. Utah State, Colorado State, homecoming here in Fort Collins. The Aggies on the road and on top. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. Presented by Geico. Seven three Utah State concern on the sideline. Cooper Legob in uh, in between those uh, two, I, I believe trainers. Uh, is without his helmet and with more on that here's Sherry Burris busy sideline down here guys for Utah State looks like Cooper Lagat could be out for sure we will see Levi in on this next series I'm learning it looks like Cooper could have been hit in the head on the slide so possible concussion is what we're thinking and what I was told from the Utah State folks but a lot of hugs for Lagat down here he definitely looks upset and frustrated all right Sherry here's Morrow on the carry he was hit twice on that series you saw the the play in the end zone where it appeared that he hit the back of his head and then on that slide as well in that same drive he was also hit and it should have been a penalty when you give yourself up as a runner and go for the slide you can't take a shot like that for this very reason head injuries are a significant problem that we've got in the sport of football so we're working to make the the, the sport safer we've got to be really really careful there Morrow from Colorado State on the moment he breaks loose he's inside the 15 he's inside the end zone Wow 26 yards Well, you understand why Jay Norvell wanted to bring him. Look at all the missed tackles. There's one, Bong Pachon. He runs through the arms there, and then secondarily, he just keeps running through these Aggies, and his second effort and want to, Rich, has been next level. He's single-handedly getting this run game going. Ran through the arms of the two best players on that defense at Bong Pachon and Reynolds. Colorado State has an answer. An emotional Jay Norvell. Avery Morrow and the Rams are back on top. Ten-seven ball game. Colorado State on top of Utah State. Rich, let's go back and take a look at that. As a linebacker, you have to have great instincts because you're so close to the football. A.J. Vong Pachong reads this perfectly, but he doesn't finish. This is a counterplay. Boom, right there. He doesn't finish. M.J. Tafisi doesn't finish. Then he runs through Hunter Reynolds' arms, and then finally with the great block by wide receiver Justice Ross Simmons, Avery Morrow punches it into the end zone, and they are feeling themselves, and for good reason. Take a look at what they've done through their first 18 games of his career and how he's just exploded since coming over from Nevada. Yeah, well, one of the many players that came with Jay Norvell and his staff from Nevada to Colorado State. Kickoff through the end zone. Tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern. CBS Sports Network gives you live Major League Pickleball action. Head-to-head -head competition in Columbus, Ohio. Champions will take home $100,000 right here, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. You a pickleball player? I know you like to play tennis. What about the old uh, short court? Have dabbled in it. Levi Williams, please welcome him to the show.
he is an experienced quarterback the transfer from Wyoming has won two bowl games in his career so this isn't a guy that hasn't seen action he's played in some big games and won them has a big arm not as mobile certainly as Lega and he's going to get three yards let's go back to the slide we showed you the hit in the end zone this was the slide Lega was giving himself up and you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the runner there. False star, number 61, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, that's right guard Waylon Lapuaho had a personal foul last week, but that's what you get with a new quarterback. It's a different cadence. You're on the road. It's a little bit loud, but you have to find a way to hold your water. And this is going to change Anthony Tucker's playbook, don't you think? The offensive coordinator, difference in mobility. Well, what I liked is the first play call. They had Levi Williams run the ball to feel some hits there. And his throw is over the head of McGriff. And McGriff was wide open, and McGriff is six foot six, so that ball was way over his head. And you see him kind of winding his arms up there. He's still trying to loosen up, man. But this is an opportunity, and that's what's great about the sport of football. Everybody's one play away from playing. And to your point, Rich, he comes over from Wyoming. He's played in four games this year, but only had six attempts so far and completed two on the season. It's a dramatically different offense here than it was at Wyoming. And you could see just the change in tempo with Williams in the game. Watch that play clock. Blitz comes. Williams with time. Fires over the. Oh, man. McGriff in the pattern. I don't know if he even saw it clearly. Uh, that could be the only reason why, because this wasn't the best of thrown balls, but certainly one that McGriff feels like he should have caught. And in fact, that's a drop. That's on McGriff looking at it. He, it's just a simple concentration drop. It hit him in his left hand. He missed times that he sees it. But for some reason, he doesn't come up with it. And we haven't seen this very much from Utah State tonight, but their first series with a new quarterback didn't end well. Torrey Horton is deep. That's a booming punt by Coxon Lee. Horton gets a seam, has some speed, and charges ahead to the 35. It's a nice return on a mammoth punt. Just into the second quarter, and Colorado State is up by three. Ten seven, Colorado State on top of Utah State. Down below to Sherry Burris. Sherry. All right, guys. I'm here with quarterback Logan Bonner. First and foremost, you had surgery on your foot earlier this month. How are you feeling? How is the recovery going? Uh, I'm good. I'm just out here with the guys and trying to help us help us win a game. It's important for you to still be down here. Why is that? Yeah, you put a lot of hard work in. I mean, I love this team, love this this school. So you put a lot of hard work in, and you want to be, uh, you earn the right to lead this team. And then you, you get hurt sometimes, and you still want to help out any way you can. So that's just uh, what I wanted to do. Particularly now that Cooper Lega might be out, what is your message to the other quarterbacks in that huddle? Next man up. Uh, Coop did a great job last year when I got hurt uh, preparing, and so the other guys. So we're just uh, looking to play the next man. It's football. It's, it gets tough sometimes, but you got to have next man up. And you have a unique perspective that you have literally been in their shoes on the field how are you using that perspective to help lead this offense yeah just kind of keep them calm remind them it's a long game one play is not going to kill the game in the beginning uh, and I just try to keep them calm and try to keep them focused thank you for the time Logan I appreciate it all right guys all right Sherry thank you good stuff down there Logan Bonner out for the season Cooper Lega out for tonight at least and Levi Williams quarterbacking for Utah State meanwhile the redshirt freshman Giles Pooler with success so far, and especially when he turns around and gives it to Avery Morrow. Not that time, though. That second level of the defense for Utah State canceled its gap pretty good. You take a look at the Rams in their first three possessions. Not bad when you score on two or three of those. And it's really been Morrow's legs. He's been the difference. His yards after contact are off the charts tonight. The offensive line's getting the play going, but so many times Morrow's getting hit in the line of scrimmage like we saw there, but he's finishing with strong runs. 10 carries, 64 yards for the junior out of Seattle. Pooler rolling to his left, fires, and that's in and out of the hands of Torrey Horton. 
Yeah. And, be third and, down and nine. And Rich, this is the second pass on this series that we've seen Giles Pooler not put on an open receiver. This time, Torrey Horton, who could be the best wide receiver in the country, the ball's behind. So when you're running a shallow crossing route like that, it's really hard to turn around. Fortunately, Lewis Brown made a great catch to start this drive, but the location of Pooler isn't exactly making it easy on the receivers. So on third and nine. Blitz comes late. Coolers throw over the middle on the money. Lewis Brown has another catch. Look at where the forward progress is all the way to the 46. This is going to be fourth down and a yard. Oh, this is a big decision by Matt Mummy. They're trying to hurry up here. You maybe think you want to sneak it, but not from the shotgun here. Oh, it's a quick snap. Morrow dives and he's got it. How about that? Well, barely yes. if he does. And that's the risk. And, and that's what I don't like about being in shotgun in short yarded situations. You eliminate the best play that you have, which is the quarterback sneak. Here, though, it looks like they get it. And the way that Morrow's been running powerfully, probably not a bad call. Look at the power that he delivered. And I think Lewis Brown, his own teammate, felt the brunt of it. Jay Norvell pacing. What an emotional win at Nevada. Of course, he was the head coach there for five years. Colorado State won that game without an offensive touchdown. With two defensive touchdowns and a field goal. Cooler shuffling his feet. Ooh! Brown, the intended receiver. On Yanmu, the corner came up and arrived just as the football did. And that's a big, clean hit. And that's what the sport of football needs more of and is built upon. On yanmu has been missed some time because of injury, but he uses his shoulder, he hits Brown in the body, and that is how you play cornerback. Lewis Brown is really, in the last two weeks, really started to blossom. Three catches, 42 yards in this one. One of the many talented freshmen on this team. The future's bright offensively here. Vivens in the backfield, high snap. Vivens, the handoff, he's got nowhere to go. Gonna lose maybe three yards. This will be a long third down. Tight ends are really struggling to block the ends for Utah State. Take another look at that last hit. It's a violent hit. But it's the type of football play that we're encouraging to take the head out of the game. We've seen multiple examples today and all throughout the season, both on the NFL and collegiate levels, of what can happen, and even in this game with Cooper Lega. So I applaud those nice clean hits there. Pooler. The walk on redshirt freshman is four of eight. For 42 yards. And of course, one touchdown. Blitz coming on his left side. Stands in, fires it on the money. Caught there. Tanner Arkin, the freshman tight end, short of the first down. But this is going to be another fourth down and maybe less than about a yard and this is interesting because this is the second time in a row we've seen receivers run routes just shy of the sticks you have to know where you are and what you need to get the first down because now you're in another fourth down situation the second of this drive and utah state could be ready for it. freshman to freshman a 10-yard game morrow's back in for another fourth and one timeout for injured defensive player and a and Aggie goes down. Tavian Coleman. Jay Norvell was not happy. Oh, I don't know. Well, it, there's a point of emphasis this year. It, it's a real, it's a real impossible place for an official, isn't it? It, it is because how can you determine in, in the easiest excuse if you will and I'm making assumptions here is a a muscle cramp that's the easiest thing to fake if you were to do that and in no way America am I saying that Utah State is doing that but Rich to answer your question it's extremely hard to prove that somebody's doing it for strategic purposes but to your point they're trying to make it a point of emphasis you can turn these plays in they will be reviewed at the conference level and if there is impropriety in play there are penalties at stake and the context to this is the last fourth and one on this drive Colorado State hurried to the line of scrimmage and maybe caught Utah State unprepared and got the first down almost the exact same scenario here 
Yes. And it also gives Colorado State a free timeout to discuss what it is they want to do. Obviously, they're hitting the gas pedal. They're an aggressive team to begin with. You're at home. You like the way that your running back is running with power behind his pads. It's going to be interesting to see what Mummy pulls here. And if you're Utah State, you got to hold your water and not jump off sides. Penalties have been a problem for them all season. And that's continued into the first part of this game. Fourth and one. Just outside the 35. Jalen Thomas in the back. The pooler's going to roll and throw, oh. and it's incomplete. Gervin Hall on the coverage. So they went away from the run after the injury timeout. And Pooler's throw is off the mark. That was an awful play call. They should not have thrown that in that situation. Matt Mummy's as good as they are in this business, but that was a huge mistake giving Utah State some momentum. Aaron Taylor, a lot to chew on in that last fourth and one. Yeah, the, the play call itself I wasn't too uh, impressed by because Giles Pooler is a left-handed quarterback. This is basically waggle or sprint right option, but for a left-handed quarterback, it's hard to get your shoulders around and throw the football accurately. The throw was there, but because you're running this to the right and not to the left, it makes it even harder for Giles Pooler, who hasn't been very accurate tonight to begin with. Now, back to the other quarterback story. Levi Williams airs it out deep down the sideline, and it's incomplete. Jalen Royals in the pattern, and a flag is down now. It was late. The official was really trying to get it out, and it was stuck. So the decision was made early, but in the official's defense, his flag got stuck. But yeah, Lede was all over him. So that's why the flag did. I looked for the flag immediately. <laughs> it was stuck in his belt. He was trying to get it out. Long conference. Pass interference, number 10, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. A lot of contacts down the field by Lede. He turns to try to play for the ball, but you see his arm come across his chest. And there's the official trying to get the flag out, and it got stuck. But significantly impeding the receiver's ability to make that catch. How about doing it again? And you know what? That's Anthony Tucker, the offensive coordinator, seeing, all right, what does Levi Williams do best? And that's throw it and throw it deep. He's got a strong arm. Yeah, but the problem is he's got to give the receiver a chance. He throws this ball, and it looked out of bounds. And if you're Brian Cobbs, give him a little bit more room on that shoulder there. That's a high throw and a nice catch by McGriff. That's where that height comes into play for McGriff. And those were soft hands, too. Not necessarily easy for a big receiver like that. A lot of receivers like to catch the ball against their bodies and trap it. But that was a beautiful soft hands display by 10. 12 yards on the pickup into Colorado State territory. Williams won the Arizona Bowl in 2019 and the famous Idaho Potato Bowl last season for Wyoming. So he's been battle tested. But this offense is not an easy one to jump on to. And like a moving train, there's a lot of moving parts to this. Yeah, Utah State, and they put Terrell Vaughn in motion there. The safety was like 20 yards deep. That's free money if they go back to it. This could be a throw. Vaughn going to throw back to Williams, and he drops the ball. Is it in lateral? I don't think it is. Colorado State picks it up. But that was well covered. He had company over there. Seen both of these staffs with some pretty aggressive play calls. Utah State loves the big play. Not actually a bad throw by Vaughn's, but Levi Williams, who's a quarterback, used to throwing passes, not catching it. Not sure that one was in the Wyoming playbook. <laughs> no, Greg Bull, no <laughs> chance. Here's an opportunity for Colorado State to use its strength, and that's rushing the passer. Looks like they're going to blitz. Long count by Williams, low snap, picks it up, pressure, and incomplete. 
And the blitz came. Mohamed Kamara again. Kamara's lined up right over the football, and that's what spooks the center with the bad snap. He's trying to get over and block CJ on Yechi, but the bad snap. It's a dribbler way too low, and Levi Williams, as tall as he is, is lucky to get that chance. And now Utah State trying to kick a prayer. This is right at the leg distance of Connor Coles. 52-yard attempt. He's hit a 50-yarder this year. The kick, it is no good. He's missed two. From 45 and now from 52. And Utah State comes up empty. This is the second missed field goal of the night. A big part of how they beat Air Force. That's a glance right Man, off the upright. So close yet so far. And I tell you what, the foolish penalties and the self inflicted wounds starting to accumulate here for the Aggies and Colorado State desperately trying to take advantage of it offensively. Colorado State has a really good redshirt freshman quarterback Clay Millen who has completed 74 percent of his passes but he's been out with a shoulder injury. They hope that he's back next week. Giles Pooler getting the start. Morrow picks his way through the first level and then gets caught from behind. MJ Tafisi with the stop. Leo Nevis on that as well. But taking a look at Morrow, look how often he gets hit. But he runs behind his pads, meaning he's got a low center of gravity and super powerful legs, great balance, and it's want to. Morrow has the heart of a lion, and he is really making this run game go for Colorado State. Because I'll be honest, offensively up front, the Rams aren't getting it done. Morrow trying to get outside does has a seam across midfield breaks no, not that tackle this time Hunter Reynolds got the jersey and was able to get him down. I was hard on the tight ends because they hadn't been doing a good job on the perimeter to get their blocks but what you're going to see is Arkin come across and seal the edge beautifully done bang right there and because Vong Pachon played downhill and took a tight angle he basically blocked himself. And 25 was off to the races. First and 10, 46 yard line of Utah State. Giles Pooler so far has managed the game and moved the offense. Play action. Oh, and he's hit from behind and sacked. Here comes the heat. Here comes Daniel Greshik. Greshik was playing out on the flat in coverage, but here he is here. And he's just going to beat the right tackle, Dante Keys. Really enjoyed talking with Keys, but he just gives him a ghost move. Such a good get off. Great bend, dips that shoulder, and Keyes basically misses him. And Pooler's really lucky he held on to that football. Ephraim Banda, the uh, energetic and very good defensive coordinator for Utah State. Pooler, sideline. One of the things about the air raid, and we talked to Matt Mummy about it, his offense is kind of designed for a right handed quarterback. We asked him, when's the last lefty? that ran this air raid and he thought and he goes you know what I'm going to go all the way back to Kentucky and Jared Lorenzen and when we talked to him yesterday that was among the first things that Giles Pooler said hey there's some plays that are specifically right handed like a sprint right option are we going to flip that he said no we're going to do what we do and we saw what happened as a result they're down 18 look screen left side Flips the screen to the right side, and that's incomplete. Threw it at the shoe tops of Avery Morrow, but Pooler had pressure. You'd love to have pressure on a screen pass. It helps make your job easily, but when you don't block the defender, Byron Vaughn's off the outside edge. You still get your quarterback hurt, and he spooks because he sees him there first, so he rushes the throw, and it ends up on the ground. Patty Turner, the sophomore, the transfer from Nevada. Of course, last year Colorado State had a great punter, Ryan Stonehouse, who is lighting the NFL up right now, averaging 55 yards a punt. And a good roll there. It's going to be down inside the 10-yard line. 
Six and a half minutes left. First half, Colorado State by three. Ten seven, Colorado State on top of Utah State. Tomorrow night, 10 Eastern, NWSL quarterfinal showdown. San Diego, their first ever postseason match against the Red Stars of Chicago. Let's see who advances to the semifinals right here. CBS Sports Network, one of my favorite play-by-play -play announcers on that. Jen Hildreth and Ali Wagner have the call. This has been, so far, not a great night for quarterback's health. Already banged up on both sides. Cooper Lega left the game. Levi Williams is in for Utah State. This is Levi Williams, and Levi Williams all of a sudden channeling his inner Cooper Lega races out to the 34-yard line. Great play call that time by Anthony Tucker. The quarterback run, but I did notice this. Williams, when he got tackled there, his ankle was up underneath him. Funny, he popped up quick, so I didn't think it hurt him, but clearly limping here. They might lose another one. That's 25 yards on that carry. He's still limping noticeably after that handoff. We got his leg wrapped up and twisted underneath him. Funny, and you could see right there the way he brought it up. You can tell by the way guys go down if something's hurting. And then certainly after he stood up, he's in some pain. But to his credit, he's gotten it out here. Logan Bonner's out for the year. Cooper Legault is out for tonight. Williams a little strong on that throw, but caught by Vaughn. They like to get him the ball in space, but to Colorado State's credit, there hasn't been much space when he's caught it. Extremely tight coverage there in the ball location for Levi Williams. Now, accuracy is basically a function from the ground up. If your feet and your plant leg and your pivot leg aren't right, it makes it really hard to throw the football. I believe that that was Levi Williams' left foot which would make it his front, which would be better than if it were his plant foot. Third down six. Williams, heavy pressure. Fires it down the sideline. Nai Davis is out there, and it's over his head and incomplete. And look at that. That's trouble for Utah State. That's, Williams limping to the sideline. That's big, big, big trouble for a right-handed quarterback. You can't plant, and you just see him sitting there hopping. It hurts so bad he doesn't even want to put it in the ground after he throws the ball. That's keeping Sherry Burris quite busy right oh, now on both sidelines. Whoa! It's blocked! Colorado State! Dade Olsen got in there, made the block. Day, who got the pass interference penalty is coming off that right hand side he doesn't get the block but he certainly gets the recovery just an excellent job of getting up inside Dane Olsen the wide receiver with the block an incredible job in back to back weeks that the Aggies Rich have struggled on special teams remember Air Force was able to pop, excuse me. Yeah, Air Force was able to convert a fake punt and keep a drive going, and that's Blake Anderson's responsibility. Mm. Now, Giles Pooler back in action at the 20 yard line of Utah State. Morrow surges ahead, just like the Nevada game. Colorado State's offense isn't great tonight, but everything else is. Defense has made some stops, special teams as well. Well, I've been hard on the offensive line. I want to give Dante Bivens, the left guard, number 74, some credit there. It's been banged up a little bit, but he really sustained his block there extremely long, and it doesn't seem like it's much. When you're looking at a second and six at the end of the second quarter inside the red zone, every yard matters. You saw that note. They blocked a punt last year in this game in Ogden. Flags down. False start, number 67. Offense, five yard penalty. 
Second down. And that's Gray Davis, a transfer from Nevada, the universal vocal leader of this offensive line. Penalties for this offense were brutal last week. 14 of them for 136 yards. And now you're inside the red zone. You had a nice first down pickup, but you're behind the sticks in the most important area on the field. Five penalties, 45 yards so far tonight. Morrow in that hole closes quickly. Tavian Coleman coming up, making the hit. And now you're faced with third down and 12. And MJ Mafisi, the leading tackler on this team, number two, watch this guy read it. His eyes. He triggers his read right there and he gets inside the tight end who is trying to block him down. That's great instinctual linebacker play and a big reason why him and Vong Pachan are so good as a pair in the middle there. Pooler is 5 of 12, 53 yards. Flushed. Looking. Fires. And traffic. Boy, three white shirts around Tanner Ark in the tight end. Yeah, this is an example of maybe it moving a little bit fast. Go ahead and roll it, guys. He tries to throw the football into double coverage, but right down here at the bottom, he's got Dane Olson, who's wide open. You can see him there. There's nobody on him. That's where he should have thrown the football. Instead, he tries to force it into double coverage, and now they're kicking a field goal. Michael Boyle. Remember they had to settle for a field goal off the interception early in that first quarter which was inside the red zone and here a trip into the red zone and this one is no good hooked it left the Colorado State with a great opportunity set up by their special teams misses a field goal and there's 320 left. Here in the first half. See Blake Anderson talking to his leader on defense there. Special teams have been a problem, particularly with the place kicking for each of these teams. Now this win has picked up and it's swirling now. It has completely changed direction since we entered the stadium. That's not an excuse, but you see the frustration on Jay Norvell not being able to convert that incredible blocked punt into points. Rich, there's a ridiculous stat. Teams that block punts in games win at a rate of about 80 plus percent, but that was a huge missed opportunity for the Rams. All right, we'll keep our eye on quarterback Levi Williams, who still is noticeably limping. It looks like a fresh tape job on that right ankle. You just can't go open up another can of quarterbacks. I mean, this is quarterback number six combined for both of these teams. Got to respect Levi Williams being out there. The Warrior. Williams still got that big arm, and that throw in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Terrell Vaughn. Let's go down to Sherry Burris. Sherry? Well, guys, you mentioned it. Levi Williams banged up, but he's fighting through. It looks like a heel injury. I saw him in the medical tent, and now you'll notice that left heel and ankle a little bit more taped up than previously. Hey, Sherry, with all these quarterbacks going down, you've been on both sidelines. You, you, you all right? It's we're at altitude. We are, and I am running, Rich. Let me tell you, but I'm getting in my steps just like these guys. Yeah, you had those uncomfortable boots on too. Did you change those out? <laughs> I am still rocking the boots, guys. Third down. Williams throw. Hit as he throws. It's incomplete. Vaughn, the intended receiver. Kamara again. Mohammed Kamara. We so enjoyed our time. He's coming from depth. Not a very good effort by the running back to try to pick him up. It's not a fair fight, but you have to make contact and slow him down. And 42 has been a problem all night rushing the passer. All right. Cotton Lee gets another shot here. And this time they protect him. Horton is deep. Bobbles it, picks it up, breaks a tackle, slides by another, sideline, and Horton is dragged down from behind. It's a nice return to the 37-yard line. Verizon halftime report. Brent Stover, Kevin Carter, Houston Nutt. What a day in college football, and a lot of games tonight as well. And they'll recap that thrilling Alabama-Tennessee game. Number six, Tennessee with the upset. It's all coming up. Verizon halftime reports. Yeah, great job by Tyler Horton there on the return. 
Had three punt returns last week for 40 yards. He's such a good football player. The coaches wanted to find a way to get him more touches in the game. And that last return, the classic case of out kicking your coverage, Horton made him pay. And now Colorado State's got two timeouts, two and a half minutes, and receives the ball to start the second half. This is a big time opportunity for the Rams. On a draw, Avery Morrow has been their best offensive weapon. And he's across the 40 yard line, a gain of four. Well, we saw Blake Anderson talking to his defensive leader, A.J. Vong Pachong, before this series after that missed field goal and he desperately needs this unit to get a stop and hold them and hopefully get the ball back for the offense so that these teams can figure out some things and settle down they do not want to give points up here cooler waits delivers traffic Arkin didn't hold it he's got big shoes to fill Trey McBride was so good here second round pick of Arizona but they really like this freshman yeah but here's a situation where you want to put the ball on his body because of the tight coverage instead he puts it out to the right and he's trying to rush Arkin is to get the football away from the defender and that's why he ends up dropping it. you put it on his chest where he can cover it and protect it with his body that's the location you want in that situation one of seven on third down for the nation's worst third down team this year great opportunity for the Aggies and their cheetah package coming 36 and his time evaporates Patrick Joyner in his face and a sack for Utah State and flags go down and Byron Vaughn's took a I don't know if it was a shove or a hit but this is not good I mean these are the two Utah State quarterbacks headed to the locker room right now. Lega on the left was hit and he's been out for a while and Williams with that right ankle and they're both headed to the locker room. Which means who are we going to see at the quarterback position. Bishop Davenport. I mean you're, you're running out of options here for Utah State. There's always a single wing. <laughs> There's always half time to right. knock the edge off things a little bit too. Yeah, and that may be what Utah State is. Hey, let's get him in. There's Davenport right there starting to loosen up. And that might not be a bad move. Get, especially Williams, get Williams into the locker room. Get some treatment on that ankle and get a head start on that before the second half. But this is a this is a challenge for both head coaches and both offensive coordinators. Here's a call. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team. Personal foul, face mask, number zero of the defense. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 52 of the offense. The yardage offset, third down. Well, this. Aggie football team has been so heavily penalized this year coming into tonight's game 130th in the country with 83 yards per game Patrick Joyner who's lined up right over the center had a great move and a sack but he doesn't finish and there's a little pushing and shoving and now they offset with some penalties that, that looks more like uh, Premier League soccer than I don't know was that the flag? I mean, was that that shove? That, that's what they called. And a lot of times you'll do that, the officials, to make sure that things don't get out of hand. Remember, for Colorado State in that game against Nevada, it was super duper chippy. But that left hand on Joyner, they called a face mask. Pooler, it's back to third down. Or actually, it's a first down. And Pooler escapes. You know, they announced that penalties offset and said third down and I was scratching my head because the face mask came then it was a dead ball call so it, they get the first down on the face mask. It, it took them some time to sort that out but now Colorado State's really got to watch the clock because they're dinking and dunking and they need a big chunk here. Fuller pocket gonna go deep and it's batted up. Horton did he get it? No. 
Torrey Horton almost made a spectacular catch in traffic. And this was a great play by Hunter Reynolds, the undisputed team leader. Look at the left side of your screen. He's right here. He's covering somebody else, but because the ball is thrown into traffic, he's able to make a play on the ball. Horton almost comes up with it, and then Gervin Hall at the very end with his right hand right there knocks it out. Man, these guys on both sides of the football are giving incredible efforts. But the location and the route combination, you shouldn't have two receivers that close together that far down the field. Third down six. Everybody's blitzing. And the catch there. That's Olsen. And Olsen is across midfield to the 41-yard line. That's the play that they needed. All-out blitz, so the backers come, which clears out the underneath. And then Olsen does a great job of picking up the first down and preserving the clock. 15 yards. Colorado State has two timeouts. Target line is the 30 for Michael Boyle, their field goal kicker, who's one of two on the night. And he's going to be kicking into the wind should they kick a field goal here. Utah State. Utah State's going to burn a timeout. Blake Anderson, injuries certainly have affected his club. You know, the other thing, they played Alabama in week two. Yeah. And we asked them, how did that affect your team? He didn't really want to go there, but all he said was, that can mess you up. I mean, that, you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's not an easy thing to do to go to Alabama and play a team as physical as that. Well, Pay for play gets expensive as they say and, and that's the case because this team has been banged up and it's hard because there's a difference in the body styles and the players of what there is in Logan Utah and what there is in Tuscaloosa Alabama. It's just a fact of our sport on this level. So you play those games because they're great opportunities to play against and, and, and coach against the greatest of all time. But sometimes it comes with a price 41 yard line of Utah State. They're putting pressure on Giles. Hit as he throws down the sideline. And coverage there. Horton and Anyanwu matched up. And now Giles Pooler is slow to get up. Yeah, there was tremendous pressure up top right here. Again, Dante Keys gets beat. That's a flag. And it, I don't know if it's for the low hit or the hold before the low hit. Byron Vaughns was Holden, falling, though. Number 52, offense. 10 yard penalty, first down. Okay, that's good. I was afraid that that penalty was going to be on Byron Vaughn's because it was low, but he was falling to the ground. Because he was held. Yes. <laughs> and he wasn't trying to, to hit below the knee, which is a penalty to your point. But that's huge because it puts you way outside a field goal range. And another costly penalty up front. And they may want to think about bringing a running back over on that right-hand side because Dante Keys, the transfer from FIU, is really struggling to block 11 Byron Bonds for the Aggies. Pooler hit again. Hit again, and this one is incomplete. And Pooler, man, he is he taking a beating right now. He's 6'5", 210, and he picks himself up. Watch up top. It's a little dip and go. And also credit Patrick Joyner beating the center there. It's a party in the backfield for the Rams. And now there's 51 seconds. Utah State has a timeout. If you're Colorado State, you got to be thinking about the clock. You don't want to leave Utah State too much time itself. But what's your third and 20 call in this situation? Well, you may have that call in your playbook, but you may not have the, the personnel that you feel comfortable using it with. That throw down the seam, and Horton had it bounce out of his hands. There was contact. Reynolds was there, and that's incomplete. Great play on the ball that time by Michael Onyanwu. He's been banged up. Andre Grayson's been playing, but they expected him back. He got injured against BYU, missed Air Force last week. But just super tight coverage and shakes it free, and now forces the punt. Well, you know what? Because the clock stops on the incompletion. And the we were told that last down was third down when on the field on the stick it had second down. 
So there were a couple of scoreboards that had a third down. It was second down. This is a third down. This is a throw that's caught by Mickey Fox. And Fox fights his way to the 36 yard line with 35 seconds left. Clock is rolling. What do you do here? on fourth down and about four. I think you're going to try to play it safe, kick a long field goal, but you're more concerned about bleeding the clock and not leaving Utah State any time here. So do you, you run the clock down and then try the field goal at the end? I think that's the safest play here. And remember, Colorado State gets the ball back to start the second half. Well, I don't know. Maybe you take a deep shot here and... Utah State didn't like what they saw. They call a timeout. Utah State has used a third and final timeout of the half, 30 seconds in length. So if you do try a field goal here, you're looking at about 53 yards. Well, you're hoping that Giles Pooler can throw a Hail Mary here. When we talked to Jay Norvell, he said Boyle's distance is 30 yards. That's only 47. That's quite a bit less than we usually talk to coaches about what they feel comfortable with their kicker. They've struggled missing some tonight, right? And you're going into the win. Field goal is not the right call here. It's a Hail Mary. And I'd much rather trust Pooler's arm than Boyle's leg. Boyle is warming that leg up just in case. Like he thinks he's going to get a shot. But I think you're right that that wind and his distance to begin with if you do the math, it, it doesn't add up. Buller from this distance can get it to the end zone. He's a big guy, has a pretty good arm. He'll be throwing against the wind. This is a really tall receiving group. Utah State's been able to get some pressure. So this offensive line's got their hands full because they have to give Pooler time here. Only seven seconds left. Pooler is going to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Horton playing defensive back there breaks it up. There's one second left. And so Utah State will get a snap. That was a great job by Torrey Horton instantly converting this and becoming a defensive back. Pretty good pressure allows Pooler to step up. He puts some air underneath it. Now that allows Hunter Reynolds time to get back there and look at Horton. Boom turns into a DB so that Reynolds can't intercept that football. If Reynolds intercepted that football. Obviously, it had been a, you know what? a turnover it, 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 on downs it, and interception back to the 20, but now they've got pretty good field position I was about at to say, the 35. If you think about it, to be honest, he's better off. Now, you can't think of this when it's you know no. happening in real time, but if he does intercept it and it is a touchback, ball goes out to the 20. Instead, it's at the 35. But remember, they, they've, <laughs> they've run through a couple quarterbacks. So Bishop Davenport's out there now, and... You get him a touch, run the football, cover it up with both hands, run this clock out, and get in at halftime. Delay a game, number seven, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, this is this is an offensive coordinator and head coach nightmare because you game plan offensively with the quarterback you have, and you know, hey, if we lose him, we've got quarterback number two, and we can game plan with him. Now you're on quarterback. Number three. Robert Briggs carries it out. But that's what half times are for, right? Adjustments. There'll be some busy coordinators at halftime here in Fort Collins. Homecoming. Colorado State has come out and played well, and they have the lead over Utah State. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Kubota first half stats back in Fort Collins 10 7 Colorado State on top. All right. You can look at these numbers and there are a few jump out the first downs a lot of them for Utah State with just the seven points. But the real story here is quarterback health. Rich Waltz Aaron Taylor Sherry Burris is going to update us on Utah State's quarterback situation health wise right now both coaches are look like they're going to be going with their third string quarterbacks in the second half you're scrambling right now you're trying to figure out what it is you can do to win the football game it's got to be a position different than the quarterback but this happened early Cooper Lega right there leaves the game with a head injury maybe a late hit there by Guzman as he tries to slide and then Levi Williams hurts his ankle. 
And it's just, you just, you can't lose this many guys at such an important position in this style of offense and hope to be effective. So in comes the young guy, Bishop Davenport, looking to get his first game action of the season. We also see Levi Williams that with an ankle injury, you see him jogging there, testing it out. Halftime can do wonders to help protect and knock the edge off lower extremity injuries. So what Utah State does here in the second half at the quarterback position will be a huge storyline to keep an eye on. Remember, Davenport is the fourth string quarterback. Williams is the third string quarterback. Legao, the second string quarterback. Logan Bonner, the first string quarterback, is out for the season. There will be a quiz on that to start the fourth quarter. My goodness. And of course, Colorado State has started their third string quarterback who is a walk-on redshirt freshman. That's what these two teams have been dealing with. And you know who's gonna sort it all out for us? Our Sherry Burris. Sherry? Well, the Utah State quarterback def definitely being challenged. So the update, guys, for your Cooper Lega, he is out with a concussion. Levi Williams, as Aaron mentioned, assessing that angle, but Coach Anderson telling me, probably out also. So you have Bishop Davenport. He is going to be starting here in the second half. His backup, worst case scenario, they are turning to Garrett Larson. And I asked Coach, do you have an emergency backup? Would anyone throw the ball? He told me at that point they would just have Williams hand it off. All right, Sherry. Colorado State, first possession, second half. Giles Pooler, the redshirt freshman, took some hits. And at one point, Jackson Stratton, the fourth string quarterback, warmed up on the sideline and was ready to come in the game. But Pooler never left, fires this one, and on the money, nice catch there. Lewis Brown has had a nice night. The freshman out of Inglewood. He is, and he gets himself open. He's going to run. You're going to see it on the right side of the screen. It's his zone. He's not there, and then boom, he slides over that little shuffle to the right there, creates the window and the opportunity, and Pooler put it on the money. This is where the two offensive coordinators really make their money. Matt Mummy of Colorado State, Anthony Tucker of Utah State. Rolling to his left, flips it there. Big tart, tight end. That's Tanner Arkin with a catch and a three-yard gain. Kaleo Nevis. It's pretty incredible what's stop. happening, Rich, for, for Colorado State tonight. We featured Torrey Horton, which could be the best wide receiver in the Mountain West Conference. He certainly leads the conference at 98 receiving yards a game, has yet to have a catch here tonight. They got to get him involved if they can. Now the freshman Brown has four catches to lead the way. This is Avery Morrow, who had a really good first half on the ground. 92 yards on 16 carries. But that goes nowhere, and this is going to bring up a third down and seven. Rich, one of the reasons when we talked about it coming right on halftime is Colorado State struggling on third down. The reason is because the average distance to go is almost third and ten. That's hard for an experienced quarterback to convert. Proven almost impossible here tonight for Pooler. Two of nine on third down tonight. Pooler fires to the sideline and he bounces one. And, and that, that was, was Horton. And that was Horton and he had run a good route and was open. The ball just one hopped out to him and credit the Aggies defense for getting themselves off the field here pretty early. And it's worth updating you if you've just happened upon this game. You heard Utah State's quarterback issues. Clay Millen, who's been starting all year and been having a terrific year, completing 74% of his passes, is out, probably back next week for him. Braden Fowler Nicolosi got banged around in the win against Nevada. He's not available tonight either. That is a missile of a punt. Fair catch called for and made. A sliding one there, nicely done by Cooper Jones. Dr. Pepper Fansville Cam. A lot to see. That was last night's Jay Norvell. You got to have a bonfire. And in Colorado, they have a good one here at Colorado State. And fireworks. This is an enormous crowd here tonight in this beautiful stadium in Fort Collins. It is in this track that we're at here at Canvas. Stadium is, in my opinion, the gold standard of group of five stadiums. A lot of people are studying what they've done well because they nailed it. Bishop Davenport turns and hands it off. Calvin Tyler Jr. Please welcome the freshman 
Bishop Davenport from Spring, Texas. And man, was he a great quarterback at a 6A school. Threw for over 7,300 yards, 77 touchdowns. They really, really like him. And here he is, the fourth string quarterback for Utah State. To the air, look at that money. On the money. McGriff with the catch. That's a first down. Nice play call there by Anthony Tucker. Set your feet and throw. Double slants inside. It's a quick throw. Gets out of the quarterback's hands and gets him in the rhythm. Another throw by Davenport. McGriff. Again, or excuse me, that's Terrell Vaughn. And he's into Colorado State territory. They mark it at the 44. 13 yards. I tell you what, this, uh, this guy looks sharp and composed. Hands it off. This is Tyler. Tyler breaks a tackle and inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. And this offense is cooking again. Up tempo. Fourth string quarterback looking like a starter, Bishop Davenport. He's looking pretty comfortable. He's directing traffic, and I agree with you, Rich. Strike that. <laughs> The commentator curse, I guess. Second down, and it's going to be about 14 after that loss. And that's the worst possible thing that can happen on first down in a hurry-up tempo-based offense. Remember Sherry's interview early when she asked uh, Logan Bonner, how are you helping Cooper Legar? And then she had to ask him, what about Levi Williams? She may have to go back and ask him about Bishop Davenport you now. Second down 14. And Davenport dives. Going to get a couple. It's going to be an interesting opportunity from a play call standpoint. How aggressive can Anthony Tucker, the offensive coordinator for the Aggies, afford to be here? This is the part of the field where Colorado State has had some success bending but not breaking. We've got a young guy on our center. Got to protect the football. Third down, 12. Poor man rush. Davenport, a dart to the end zone. Wow. Nine-Nine Davis in the pattern. That was a pretty well-thrown ball. May have been a little high. It, it had too much mustard on it. It needed a little bit more air. Arm strength certainly not a problem, but he was trying to force it to beat the safety that was coming over and Ooh. just outside the outstretched arms of Davis. Connor Coles has missed twice, 45 and 52. This is kind of between that distance. 48. This one he hits, and this one is good. And this game is all tied up at 10 apiece. This is some homecoming in Fort Collins. Many of you are just joining this game. Utah State, Colorado State are tied at 10. The story here, quarterback injuries. Utah State is down to their fourth string quarterback. And you know what? He looks really good. Bishop Davenport on that last drive got him in field goal position. Just missed a touchdown by inches. And so Utah State has tied the game. Then Colorado State, of course, Clay Millen's out. Braden Fowler Nicolosi is out. And Giles Pooler, a walk-on redshirt freshman, has started tonight. And the offense has had a few bright moments, mostly on the ground. But the defense and the special teams have put Colorado State in a position to have this game tied. Ajon Vivens will bring it out. Vivens gets across the 20 to the 23. Well, Rich, Torrey Horton coming into this game is the most productive wide receiver in the Mountain West Conference. But he's been targeted tonight, but not very productive. A combination of heavy coverage and throws that weren't ideal. Some good defensive play, and he's been somebody that is sitting here without a catch. And if you had told me through halftime that the best wide receiver in this conference would be touchless, I wouldn't have believed you. He does have a pass completion of 19 yards, and that's an anomaly for a guy like that to have more throws and, and completions than he's got receptions. 
For a right side. Tafisi got him from behind. And that's really encouraging right there to see Moro with that type of run because Pooler has really struggled throwing the football, Rich. You take a look, only 9 of 23, 96 yards. You mentioned it. There's been moments, but not many. <clears throat> Excuse me, not many of them. It's getting emotional up here. <laughs> you know, offensive linemen, <laughs> quarterbacks go down. That's, you know, I can see that. Pooler fires it to the sideline, and it's incomplete. Morrow was the closest in the area, but that ball was about 15 yards away from him. Yeah, I thought he missed Tanner Ark in the tight end there, too. He's missed some throws. But there's been some heavy pressure, and that's not easy on a young quarterback, but you start to feel the rush. That play was helped by a face mask call by Joyner there, but there's been a lot of hits. They've struggled up front to be able to protect Utah State, who isn't been outstanding getting after the quarterback. Coming into tonight's game, only seven sacks, but this pass rush for the Aggies has been on point tonight. On third down, Pooler going down the sideline, and his receiver, Justice Ross Simmons, never saw the football. And you, Jay Norvell kind of looking and saying, what the heck happened there? Yeah, it looked like Pooler was throwing the ball because he's got an incredible job of keeping the red line, meaning on the numbers, he's got all that space between the numbers and the the sideline there to make that catch but he never breaks off his route Norvell was not happy about that Byron Bonds who is a valuable member of this Utah State defense he had a big game against Air Force seven tackles and you see that tape there on that right ankle he's been nursing a high ankle sprain that he got against UNLV been limited in practice but Coaches told us he was about 90 95 percent but they like his twitch off the outside edge and man he has been dominant in his matchup over Colorado State's right tackle. We'll step aside 10 apiece early in the third. 10 apiece here Colorado State Utah State. And here's the injury to Byron Vaughn's. He's up at the top of the screen playing over the right tackle. It's hard to really see kind of what he did there. Round in the corner, he mentioned that high ankle sprain. He was bending there pretty good, but injuries continue to mount for the Aggies, and Bonds in the tent getting looked at. Sherry will keep an eye on that for us and update us when appropriate. Look at this formation. They're coming off this right side, maybe trying to get their own version of a block. Remember Blake Anderson. Heavily involved in special teams. They blocked two punts already this year. That's a low line drive. And it takes a quick left turn. Down the middle to the end zone. Touchdown. This is unbelievable back and forth. Oh, down the middle. Oh, my goodness. The kick. Is good. Mahomes to the end zone for the win. Ball game. Tomorrow the rematch. Many have said the greatest playoff game in NFL history. Josh Allen and the Bills. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Great day of football tomorrow. The NFL on CBS. And go back to their numbers. Allen threw for 329. Mahomes threw for 378. It's incredible. I really enjoyed getting a chance to call a couple games for Josh Allen while at Wyoming. I had no idea he turned into the player he has. Tyler knocked out of bounds. When these two teams play each other, it, lately it's been a just crazy good games. Yes. Last year in Logan, I mean, the, the game was wild. It came down to the end. It came down to a, a, a missed field goal attempt. Fourth string quarterback. Hands to Calvin Tyler. First string running back. And he shows you why. Across midfield, inside the 40, and inside the 35 yard line. It's clear that Utah State wants to run the football and put it on Calvin Tyler and not on the legs of the young buck. Davenport pulls it, scrambles. 
And he gets to the 32. Aaron, he didn't he didn't get to Logan until the summer. He did not play spring ball. He's as fresh a freshman as you're going to get. And not a lot of snaps in the fall or in practice because he's the fourth string quarterback. Tyler again. And Tyler gets to the 26, a yard shy of the first down. It may not be a problem if Utah State can continue to run the football like they are on this drive. They rushed for almost 200 yards against Air Force a week ago. Over five yards of carry, two rushing touchdowns. And they're seemingly lathered up here in the third quarter. He'll pull it. Davenport has the first down, still on his feet to the six yard line. You're going to see the ends crash down. Everybody's responding to what they think is going to be there. And Davenport sees it, makes the right read, and just completely fakes out the defensive end who had no idea where the football was. That is a money play at the quarterback position, and the quarterback keep once again hurting the Rams. First and goal for the seven. Bishop Davenport out of Spring, Texas, at the controls. Davenport looking, firing, and incomplete. Had two receivers there. Vaughn was there, and McGriff was there. In the red zone, 18 trips, just seven touchdowns. That's not great. Yeah, and you're looking at only 39% touchdowns when you're down there. 70 plus percent, usually 75% is the gold standard. So they're about halfway to where it is they want to be. In breaking routes or quarterback draw here. Tyler here. Or that. Inside the five to the four. This is going to be third and goal from the four. The Aggies offensive line Chandler Dolphin, Waylon, Lapuaho, Jacob South, Wade Meacham, and their leader, Alfred Edwards, that we highlighted in the feature. These are the situations that win you football games. And Utah State desperately wants a touchdown here. Shotgun blitz, rolling, keeping, leaping in, touchdown. A big step over, avoids a tackle. And Bishop Davenport sticks it in the end zone. Tremendous play call by offensive coordinator Anthony Tucker. This is a two-way go. He can throw it or run it. The safety's desperately Jack Howell trying to get over there, but it's just the seize part. Davenport sees it and sticks it in to take what's about to be a seven-point lead. It was the run game that got it humming and got him down there. Excellent job there by the Aggies. Extra point is good. And Utah State with their fourth-string quarterback, who looks like a seasoned veteran right now, takes it down, sticks it in. Bishop Davenport and the Aggies are up by a touchdown. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. By Kubota, together we do more. And by Papa John's new Papa Pairings. Order more favorites for less. Big homecoming crowd in Fort Collins. Utah State has lost two quarterbacks tonight. Cooper Lega to a concussion. Levi Williams to a heel injury. They're down to their fourth string quarterback who just led them on a touchdown drive. It's Bishop Davenport and now Colorado State is going to have to get their offense in gear. But pretty incredible by Davenport Rich led two eight play drives both of which ended in points. The first was a field goal. The second was a touchdown that he scored and for a guy that had yet to take a snap in college football in 2022. That's pretty remarkable for him to come off the bench and do what he's done here tonight on the road. Didn't complete a pass on that that drive but had some big runs and of course the touchdown to finish. When on the road you got to run the ball and play defense and they're doing it. 
Morrow doing his best offensively for Colorado State. A nice carry out there for eight yards. CBS Sports celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month. Utah State defensive coordinator Efren Banda is of Mexican descent, considered one of the top young coordinators in the game. He's been at Texas, Mississippi State, and Miami. Now the defensive coordinator here. He has coached in a bowl game for 10 straight seasons. And a lot of fun to talk to as well. He is, and he's a pretty good play caller. His defense is based on penetration and getting north and south. And his linebacker play tonight has been pretty amazing. They haven't tackled as well as he would like. They're probably going to hear about that. But for the most part, those two guys in there, MJ Tafisi and AJ Vongpachan, number 10 there, are pretty remarkable linebackers. Morrow on that carry. He's now at 107 yards on 20 carries. But they have to figure out third down. They're two of 11 on third down tonight. This is third and really short. Yeah, but take a look. It was third 9.6. We threw the graphic up earlier. This is the ideal situation. Even Air Force would be happy with this. <laughs> Air Force, they're usually happy at third and three or third and four, actually. But yeah, uh, and they don't get it here. Goodness. That's Daniel Greshik, and that's Ephraim Banda's defense. Man, Greshik has been on fire tonight. He's just holding down that in position and just completely jacks the left tackle there, Jacob Gardner. Gardner's played some center this year, but that is how you play with violent hands, good pad level, great leverage, and they lose yardage, and now Colorado State with a three and out kicking the ball back to an offense that scored on back-to-back -back drives. Patty Turner to punt it. Kind of an end-over-end -end kick. Fair catch called for and made at the 31 by Cooper Jones. 534 left, third quarter. Jay Norvell and the Rams are down. Utah State by seven. Brent Stover in New York, DJ Uyunglele, two touchdowns through the air, and this one on the ground, number four, Clemson leads Florida State 24-14 at the break. Back out to Rich, Aaron, and Sherry, guys. Brent Stover, thank you. If you have any eligibility left, Brent, <laughs> you know you were an NCAA athlete. Well, that, that's, that's a little bit of a stretch. It was cross country, oh, and there's on. a picture that we can show he did have grit and determination, like the look on his face when he was running cross country just shows you that he's got the heart of a lion. Utah State keeps it on the ground. Calvin Tyler has taken the bulk of the carries. We've seen a little bit of Robert Briggs tonight as well. Tyler's night is closing in on 100 yards, 91 on 13 carries. If I'm Colorado State, I'm making Utah State throw to beat me. I want Bishop Davenport to prove to me that he can beat me. But that's not what's happening. Utah State's offensive line and Calvin Tyler are gashing Colorado State on the run here since Davenport came in. Third down, long three. Davenport, play fake, fires behind McGriff. And Maybe a little why. too much mustard on it. And that's why. Great job of the Rams defense of responding back to back three and outs by both of these teams that balls there nice job by McGriff get inside leverage but you see the little hitch in the double pump his feet are moving he doesn't put it on the spot and Utah State is punting it away Torrey Horton is deep dangerous punt returner and he got away from that one and that is going to cost them as Utah State's going to down that around the three or four yard line. And Rich, that is not good for a defense that loves to get north and south and cause havoc with penetration when you're that close to the goal line. And of course, Colorado State's offense has uh, stalled certainly here in the second half. Let's check in with Sherry Burris. Sherry? Well, guys, there isn't a lot of discussion on the transition on the defensive side of playing a triple option team, and that's exactly what Utah State is facing after they beat Air Force 
last Friday. Defensive coordinator Efren Bonda told us it's not only physical, but mental. Now, the best comparison we came up with is jet lag, right? Easier heading to there to where you're going than coming home. And so Bonda telling us is Aggies defense. They were playing in not their traditional scheme. So, Aaron, what are you seeing as they're, they were used to the triple option now having to go back to that traditional look of their defense? Yeah, well, they got gas a couple years ago by Air Force and Bonda owned it. He said we weren't doing what we needed to do. So we made those adjustments and started playing a little bit more of a two gap style than playing lateral there. That's a nuanced great question and Sherry wins the award this week for best questions in our coaches call with Utah State. She asked that question about the hangover from the option. She also asked the left handed right handed question again uh, running the air raid for Colorado State so I don't, I, there has to be some sort of award and prize because Aaron and I just asked where should we eat <laughs> That's a, also a very important question but uh, I gotta brush my shoulder off on those guys Williams with the catch nicely done and Pooler connects for a big first down out to the 30. Nice job of Pooler finding Gary Williams the tight end here there was pressure in his face but he still delivers the football in an area to be able to move the sticks and Utah State being aggressive and coming after it. But that was one of the better throws and decisions there that we've seen from Pooler. Hasn't had as much success throwing the football as he'd want. And man, they'd love to have their run game get fired up like Utah State's has been. When is Torrey Horton going to be a factor here? And can Pooler get him the football? Eight of, uh, not even a yard. These defensive ends for Utah State are having a heck of a game. Both Daniel Greshik, number nine, and Byron Bonds, number 11. Know he's been banged up, but Greshik, particularly. He's not going to show up too much in the stat books. He's got a tackle and a half for loss, but he has been dominant in many of the perimeter runs that haven't gone anywhere, that wanted to get outside, that got forced back in, were because nine more than did his job setting the edge. Cooler, deep shot, Horton again! Flags down. Ball arrived. Johnny Carter arrived about the same time. Good throw, and this penalty's going against Utah State. It was a beautiful throw, and how about you, you little prognosticator? They go deep and... Pass interference, number 12. Defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. I'll be honest, with my naked eye, I thought it was pretty clean. Horton had a couple steps on him, and then he grabs him right there. Yeah, I didn't see that part with his left hand of Johnny Carter. Now, Carter's a converted wide receiver, and he was the guy that punched the ball free from the running back and had the interception in the fourth quarter last week to seal it, but he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar there. I don't know that I'm down with the little prognosticator. <laughs> <laughs> Very large. <laughs> Pooler, under pressure throws, gets hit again. And that's incomplete. Second down and 10. Grishik with the uh, pressure. Uh, Second down and 17. Remember the penalty that backed him up. Briggs. Stripped to the ball. It's loose. I don't know if he was down or not. Colorado State thinks they have it. And the officials say they do. Colorado State has it. Cam Barato. Barato didn't have his helmet, but he certainly had the football. Daquan Jackson may have stripped it. Rich talking with Freddie Banks, the defensive coordinator. He said, we have to find ways to get turnovers. And it's Daquan Jackson right there that pulls the ball out. And in back-to-back -back weeks, Colorado State finding ways to win the turnover battle in their second week in a row with two turnovers. Now, you could see there that the ball carrier Briggs was down, but he, his knee never hit the ground before the ball came out because he was laying on the tackler, which means he's still live. 100%. It was clean as can be. They may want to take a look at it, but they're going to end up where they are right now, which is Colorado State snapping the ball in their possession. Cooler. 
And Morrow is just getting the bulk of the work right now. Utah State knows that. And the yardage is, is much tougher to come right now for the junior running back. Very good defensive line play there. What I'm noticing with Colorado State is there's three factors of an offensive line and they're just not sustaining. Man, how many plot twists have we had already in this one? On to the fourth. 17-10. Utah State. Into the fourth in Fort Collins. Our Geico difference makers through the first three. How about Bishop Davenport, fourth string quarterback for Utah State? Hasn't thrown it that much, but those rushing yards on the touchdown drive, very important. And Avery Morrow is doing the bulk of the work right now for this offense at Colorado State. 110 yards on 25 carries in the red zone. Is young Giles Pooler, the red shirt walk on freshman quarterback in Colorado State. From the 11, second down and nine. This is going to turn into second down and 14. Some didn't Falls look right there. Number 75, offense, five yard penalty, second down. That's Jacob clock Gardner. Operator. Please reset the game clock to 15 minutes. And another costly penalty. Colorado State told us they wanted to avoid negative plays. They've given up so many tackles for loss. Last in the Mountain West Conference in sacks allowed. And now they're shooting themselves in the foot with foolish penalties. And that's what you get when you get a new quarterback. Eight so far tonight for 75 yards. And the most important play on the field when you really get a sense that Colorado State needs to convert this with a touchdown. Second down 14. They can get a first down inside the three. Buller lobs it. Horton adjusts and it's just out of his reach. And incomplete and it's third down. You got to give the receiver a chance to get that. A lot of air under that ball. Gervin Hall comes over and is able to hit it. Horton trying to twist his head around. But you're trying to put that ball in an area where Horton has a chance to get it. And he just was too far outside his outstretched hands. And now you're third and forever. That mummy playing with a third string quarterback, an offense that didn't score a touchdown, even though they won at Nevada. Horton, bottom of your screen. Cooler steps up, scrambles, and is caught from behind. And it's Daniel Grishik. Great job by the Aggies of getting themselves off the field. Greshik coming over the left tackle there. Beats Jacob Gardner. He's been wreaking havoc all night long on the outside edge. And now he doesn't have Byron Vaughn's help because he hasn't come back into the game. So he replaces him and gets himself home. And now Colorado State forced to kick the field goal. And with the way that this is going, Dink and dunks and three points at a time aren't going to get it done. Michael Boyle knocks this one through. Rams put points on the board. Still trail by four. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Marco's. Pizza lovers get it. By Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? And by Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. We told you it was parents weekend and it was homecoming and it's also the fourth largest crowd in this stadium's history. Over 35,000 are here. And they've seen a, just a crazy game with plot twists and injuries and guys coming off the third on the depth chart, fourth on the depth chart, playing key roles in this. It's been an incredible job by these coordinators trying to pull rabbits out of their hat and give themselves a chance to win. And this thing feels like it's long from over. Through the end zone. Our evening concludes in the Mountain West in Vegas. That's a great place to conclude your evening, right? Amen. Rebels.
Air Force and CBS Sports Network. Kickoff scheduled for 1037 Eastern. Allegiant Stadium, Carter Blackburn, Tom Herman standing by with that one. And of course, Brad Roberts will be on display. What an incredible running back he is, and Air Force is the nation's best rushing offense. You see the ranks there, 352 yards a game, which is pretty impressive for this Aggie defense that held them to 264 and less than five yards a carry last week. Utah State, and there's that guy again, Tyler. Well over 100 yards now, eight more on that carry, second down and two from the 33. Hats off to what this offense has been able to do, just dialing up the run game here in the second half. Colorado State has to be able to bow its neck. They're making the Aggies' job way too easy on first down, Rich, trying to run the football. And Tyler picks up the first down with two yards there. That's Freddie Banks, the young defensive corner in a really good one. He was at Montana State last year, and his defense was the number six team in the country in FCS. He was at Nevada as well. McGriff couldn't hold it. Anusium on the coverage. Yeah, Freddie Banks, man. We loved and enjoyed sitting down and, and talking with him and some of his mentors and influencer, John Pagano, who's the Ravens DC and the head coach of, or, of Indianapolis, Gus Bradley, who's the Colts DC now, D'Amico Ryan's a 49ers defensive coordinator, talking with those guys and just trying to pick up little tips and tricks about how to be a good defensive coordinator. Yeah, and part of it, he said, was, hey, short meetings, you know, don't overload them with information and when you give them something get out there and walk through it right away and that was an adjustment to young players who have light attention spans and now Banks's group has a chance to make a big play here on third down third and seven Bishop Davenport they're blitzing the young quarterback fires to the sideline caught there that's Vaughn has the first down out to midfield what a wonderful night for Bishop Davenport, the fourth string, a true freshman. And this ball was on the money, and Colorado State brought some pressure into his face, but the Aggies picked it up. It was a great protection and play call, and give Davenport credit. He put that ball on the money to Vaughn. Davenport threw for over 7,300 yards at a 6A school, Spring High School in Spring, Texas. Tyler continues his assault. Adds five more yards. Check that. That was Robert Briggs spelling Tyler. You can just see this offensive line starting to hunt. And you take a look at the first half rushing numbers compared to the second half. Utah State averaged almost seven yards a carry in the first half, and they're well over five here in the second. Briggs again. But they are grinding it out. Flag down behind the play. It sits at midfield. Holding number 74. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Neither of these teams are real good when it comes to penalties. Both are giving up a lot of yardage and having a lot of plays called back. Yeah, Dolphin was the one that had the dribbler snap. Remember that? That caused all the havoc. He's right there in the middle on the back block. Got his left hand right around the waist and then a takedown to the ground. Just let him go, man. Like That's the coaching point there. If you're beaten at a position because your feet weren't right and your landmarks weren't right, delay him as much as you can and live to play another play because as well as you've been running the ball, now you got to start to think to get away from that, and it really puts you behind the sticks in a disadvantageous position. On third down, deep throw, McGriff, the intended receiver. Now, you know what? This is the second time this has happened. The stick, the scoreboard on the field had third down. There's second down. Now it's third down. I, I saw what you saw, Rich. This is a different play. This isn't the right play, but we were going to show you the difference in the the down marker, but I saw it like you saw it, Rich. It had third down, but now they finally got it right. Down the distance is correct. It's third and 14. 
46 yard line. Davenport flushed and then hit and dropped. Whoa, Cam Barreto. This time he kept the helmet on, and Freddie Banks' defense comes up with a big play. The strength of this defense is their defensive line, and Cam Barreto makes it happen when he needs it. Just comes around, boom. Bishop Davenport was stepping around, thought he had a free release, but he holds contain and gets Colorado State's first sack of the night, and it was a big one. Well, they almost blocked another punt. Line drive kick here, and a good bounce if you're Colorado State. Wow. It's a four-point game. And it's just, it's such a crazy wild game with, with a third-string quarterback, a fourth-string quarterback. And it seems like it's going down to the wire. That is Sarah Pooler, communications professor here at Colorado State University. And her son growing up in Fort Collins always wanted to be a Colorado State Ram. Giles Pooler was a young quarterback. And of course, Todd Centeo transferred to James Madison in the offseason. They went with Clay Millen, who's played really well, but is hurt tonight. Braden Fowler Nicolosi, the number two quarterback, is out. And so here's Pooler, a walk on, a redshirt freshman. And his team is down four. And Morrow finds a seam. Johnny Carter with the tackle. There's a flag down back at the 28 yard line. Holding number six or seven. Offense. 10 yard penalty. First down. And of course, we brought photos. Age 12. Age 15. And of course, now, present day, mom watching. He's got his hands full. This is not an easy offense to all of a sudden jump in and run. The air raid offense of Matt Mummy. Yeah, you got to be smart, have a good release with accuracy, and have some presence under center. Is what offensive coordinator Matt Mummy told is critical to play quarterback in this system. Blitz is coming on the young quarterback, gets it loose, and overthrows. His intended receiver, Jordan Williams. This is an example of being young because keep your eye right there. He's got an open throw, but he just misses it. And then he forces it, and that's just the sign of being young, and that's the thing that Matt Mummy has to consider when he's calling these plays. You've got the best wide receiver in the Mountain West Conference, and Torrey Horton, he's open backside, and you don't get the ball to him. Zero catches so far. For the guy that leads his conference in yards per game. Second down and a whole bunch. Let's see if they bring pressure again. And a timeout for Colorado State. Play clock almost expires. Seventeen thirteen, Utah State on top. We'll step aside from Fort Collins. Tight ball game. Geico presenting college football in the Mountain West. The 17-13 game. 10-14. Left in the ball game. Giles Pooler from the 21. Pooler hit as he throws. Ball is out. Bivens lands on it. I think it may have been taken from his hand before it went forward. Yeah, Dante Keyes has had a, a rough night tonight. He's going to come off this outside edge. As an offensive lineman, you've got to be able to hold up, and he just gets his hips twisted. And Daniel Greshik 
the defensive end position in combination with Byron Vaughns before he went out has been absolutely dominant here tonight. Third straight lost yardage play here for the guys in green. And that means it's third down and 29. Just punt it now. Or give it to Morrow. We'll squeeze it and hold it and get maybe six yards. Patrick Joyner made the stop. So the punt team has to come back out. That man's defense playing well. Ephraim Bonda in his second year as the defensive coordinator. What a year it was last year for Utah State. Incredible year. In year one of Blake Anderson to, to come here and with all the changes and this program was an absolute turmoil. But he brought some stability and found a way to get to the Mountain West Conference Championship game and win the whole dang thing in year one. Biggest turnaround. In the NCAA last year, from one win to 11. Ball start, number 32. Offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Aiden Hector making a bad situation worse. Well, the penalties are, are eight for 68 yards for Utah State, nine, now 10 for 90 yards for Colorado State. Neither of these teams, in all due respect, is good enough to play that poorly with the penalties. Cooper Jones. It's going to be good field position coming up for Bishop Davenport. Utah State's lead by four. Tonight's player of the game is brought to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. Now this might surprise some folks, but it shouldn't if you've been watching this game. Daniel Greshik has been a manimal out there on the defensive side. Defensive coordinator Ephraim Bonda wanted some penetration. He wanted to wreak havoc, and who's been leading that charge is Daniel Greshik. A couple sacks, three and a half tackles for loss, a quarterback pressure, a forced fumble, a pass breakup, and a partridge in a pear tree. Number nine has been unblockable tonight, and a big reason why the Rams have struggled offensively. What was it, pressure and puncture? Pressure, puncture, and penetration, and boy, he's been doing it. Davenport, McGriff in traffic, double teamed, and it's broken up. Henry Blackburn, Jack Howell on the coverage. Man, watch Henry Blackburn coming over. He's got his eyes on this ball the whole time. He thought he had an interception, and he would have, except he gets tangled up with his own player there in Howell, who knocks the ball out of Blackburn's hands. Howell's had a busy night himself. He's got 11 tackles to lead Colorado State. That's to the 44. If you're Utah State, the only time the Rams have gotten into the red zone tonight has been on turnovers or blocked punts. So from here on out, you're thinking ball security. You're losing this game right now with a blocked punt and minus two in the turnover category. Ball security is the utmost importance as you try to pick up these third downs and keep the drives going. They're down five. Tyler in the backfield with Davenport. Davenport in trouble, flushed, stumbles, and is back at the line of scrimmage. This will be fourth down and a long four. James Mitchell made the stop. Nice job by the Rams getting themselves a three and out. That play for Utah State didn't have a chance, Rich. There was communication. There was a coach on the sideline trying to signal things in. You got a new quarterback, doesn't know what's going on. There's pressure in his face. He does the best he can to make something out of nothing. But the bottom line is the Aggies punt once again. Again, if you've just joined us, we have a fourth string quarterback in Bishop Davenport for Utah State facing a third string quarterback, a walk on, Giles Pooler for Colorado State. The Aggies have lost two quarterbacks tonight to injury and already have their number one, Logan Bonner, out for the year. Despite that, it's been a pretty entertaining game. 17 13, Utah State on top. Rich. Why I love this game is because it's incredible when you have an opportunity to earn opportunities to win the conference in the division. You take a look at what's going on here. It's wide open on both sides. 
Boise State loses their quarterback. They fire their offensive coordinator. They find some juice. Colorado State is 1-0, looking to be 2-0 if they can in the conference. Utah State looking for its second win. And, man, it's been a long time since there hasn't been any dominant teams in this conference, but that's what we have this season. Pooler, sideline, and it's incomplete. Justice Ross Simmons. Another Utah State defensive back prying the ball from a wide receiver. Yeah, and Ross Simmons wants to give himself a little bit more room on that side. Michael Onyamu doing a good job of getting his hand and disrupting, and the official's right there. He's looking at it the whole time. It's a clean play. But I like the decision there by Colorado State to take a deep shot, but now they got their work cut out for them here on second and ten. The classic call here, Rich, after an incompletion in its second ten is a run. Pooler, pressured, hit, fires, caught! Acrobatic catch. How about that? Peter Montini. A seldom used tight end. He's like the fourth string tight end. I don't even have him on my board, but how about standing in the pocket and throwing that ball in only a place that Montini can get it? And what an incredible catch there by 44. Pooler's got this offense humming. Morrow. Behind Pooler, out across the 46. And they are just playing. I mean, it's like they're obviously they want Pooler to have to beat them. They have really stacked the box against Morrill. They stack in the box, but when the box count has been even in favorable numbers, it's been hard for the Rams to sustain their blocks. I started to explain this earlier, but as an offensive lineman, there's kind of three phases of a block. There's the initial power, which is the contact, how much pop you have. The middle part's the sustain, and the last part is the finish, the pancakes, right? To be successful as an O-line up front, you have to win two of those three phases, and the Rams just aren't doing that. Puller on play action. Another deep shot, and this one broken up. Flags down. Ross Simmons in the pattern, and Michael Anyanwu, the senior in coverage. There's another flag all the way back behind the line of scrimmage as well along the sideline. Yeah, last week it was Andre Grayson that got the pass interference in the fourth quarter against Air Force, and this time it's Onyanwu who just made a great play a couple plays before gets flagged here. Two fouls on the play. Ineligible player downfield, number 89, offense. The receiver was covered. Pass interference, defense. Those fouls offset. Second down. Tanner Arkin is 89. He's the tight end. Well, the end man on the line of scrimmage is the eligible receiver, but if there's somebody outside of him. Yep. There's the pass interference there at the end with the takedown. Ross Simmons, the intended receiver. Yep, he's got his right arm on that bicep, and if he let him go, he might have be able to got away with it, but because he dragged him to the ground and kind of almost a panic move, out came the laundry. So the penalty's offset, although the officials are still huddled here. And we're back to second down and 11. Five and a half minutes left. Colorado State has two timeouts left. Utah State has all three of theirs. Pooler, big blitz, stands in front of it, uh -oh. fires over the middle, and it's picked off, intercepted. Utah State up the field. Gervin Hall, flag is down. Hall is in. More flags are down in the end zone, but one is down back at the 37. Rich, this may be unsportsmanlike conduct, which could turn what was an incredible play for the pick six and possibly negate it. Yeah, th those flags came out as he came into the end zone. Because he dove unnecessarily, which is too flamboyant. <laughs> All right, here's a, here's a look. 
Hall makes the pick. He's got a clear path to the end zone. At that point, there's a flag thrown back at the 38. Out of our view, obviously. That might have been an illegal block. But he dives there unnecessarily to showboat. And that sort of excessive celebration can pull points off the board. 68 yards on the return. There are two fouls on the play, both by the return team. Holding number 94. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number six. Both fouls will be enforced. First down, Utah State. This could bring the ball back close to midfield. But more importantly, Rich, it just took a touchdown off the game. That would have effectively sealed this for Utah State. So, yes, they maintain possession. But, man, sloppy play there cost these guys a touchdown. Colorado State has only scored 13 points on offense in the last two weeks. They've struggled mightily to move the football. And this is just unnecessary. And these are the penalties that have plagued Utah State all season long. And you like Hall made the interception. It was a gift thrown right to him. You don't need that foolish stuff there at the end. Because this is an opportunity. Let's say Colorado State's defensive line gets after the quarterback and causes a fumble. Now where you at? So the, the, the holding call is point of foul. was where you mark the hold from. And then you add on the personal foul, which is another 15 yards. So this football comes all the way back to Utah State's 38-yard line. So they still get to benefit from the turnover, but there were easy points at their disposable, the easiest of the night, and they blew it. Davenport, quarterback draw. Second effort gets them to the 41. The Utah State right now, Tell you what, Bishop Davenport has done everything that uh, I think Anthony Tucker, the offensive coordinator, could have asked. He, he hasn't been spectacular, but he's been pretty good. He's he's run the team. He's handled, had a touchdown drive. Davenport's three of nine through the air for 41 yards. He's run for 26, including a touchdown. Tyler. Yeah. The best thing he's done tonight, Rich, is not turn the football over and be able to turn around and hand it to Calvin Tyler. And you know what? For a fourth-string quarterback who wasn't there in the spring, who hasn't had many reps at all in the fall or even in practice, that's an accomplishment. It's incredible, and it's a testament to Anthony Tucker, the offensive coordinator, for getting his guys ready to play and to adjust his play calling based on the skill set and abilities of his quarterback. Here's where Colorado State has hunted. The third down, Davenport rolls, looks, keeps it, and with a dive, I think he's got the first down. Incredible effort there by the freshman. He, Daquan Jackson made the stop. He avoided Mohamed Kamara, and that's not easy. Look, 42 Kamara is a great defensive player. Tyler got a piece of him. And that's a first down. It moves the sticks. Incredible individual effort that we've seen from several players tonight. But that's how you win ball games. There's only three minutes and 38 seconds left in this ball game to extend that drive with Seisman. And that was all second effort there by the true freshman quarterback, Bishop Davenport. Well, it's going to be a busy week for the trading staffs of both of these schools trying to get quarterbacks healthy for next week. No doubt about that. Tyler looking for a seam. There's a nice gain. We have about six yards. Jack Howell made the stop. Colorado State, remember, had to call a timeout earlier in the half. And they've got just two left. Right, it's a little early for them to be doing that. You want to have some success on first down. But you're absolutely right, Rich. If you want to get this ball back, you've got to have some time left on the clock to do something with it. But right now, it's Utah State's game to lose. And that game rests on the shoulders of that offensive line and Calvin Tyler. Tyler. 
is short of the first down. This is going to bring up third down and about two. Barito made the stop. And they'll take their first time out here smartly to give them a chance to get a stop here on fourth down, maybe call their second time out to preserve some time on the clock. We'll take a time out. Back in 30 with a crucial third down and two for Utah State. Just crazy circumstances here tonight for both coaches. Blake Anderson lost his number two quarterback, Cooper Lega, number three quarterback, Levi Williams. That man, Jay Norvell, lost two quarterbacks his last game. Braden Fowler, Nicolosi, Clay Millen out, hopefully back next week, and he's gone with a walk-on redshirt freshman, his third string quarterback. Third down and two for Utah State. Anderson. He has Davenport in the shotgun. It's close Tyler backing up and with that leg drive he's right on the stick and I think Norvell will want to take his next time out here they've got to measure it and take a look at it but he's short so the question is if he is short and you are Utah State Ooh. do you I mean, look at the, we can eyeball it right there. Time out for a measurement. Yes, thank hey, you. <laughs> if you're me, you let your offensive line that's almost rushed for 250 yards at least pave the way, sneak this ball and end this ball game. Offensive coordinator Aaron Taylor. You're on the road. You've got faith in your defense, but and you do not want to turn the football over to anybody with this much time and give them a chance to win because they've only got a four point lead. Big measurement. But here's the thing if you're Utah State in the air raid how comfortable are you with Bishop Davenport taking the snap under center if you want to sneak it or do you do it from the shotgun. Oh wow. Man. That is a first down. Wow. <laughs> Not by much, but a first down. Wow. All right, so. You just heard Blake Anderson say, hey, they're out of timeouts. I thought that was a generous spot. I thought he was short. But Blake Anderson doesn't, and he doesn't care what I think either. Colorado State has elected to use their third and final timeout at half, 30 seconds in length. So there's the last timeout right there. 216 left. We are back in 30. You called that touchdown. Saw that sack coming. Predicted the pizza tasted better than it looks. And of course, you knew the game's not over until it's over. So this NFL season, put your skills to the test with FanDuel's free games for a shot at $1 million in prizes. FanDuel, make every moment more. Bishop Davenport, the offense back on the field. Another look at that run and the spot. Great effort by Tyler. Seems like on that surge he got to that the 41 and a half. It's enough for the first down barely. And now Utah State will keep it on the ground and keep the clock rolling. Colorado State is out of timeouts. Jay Norvell and his defense. They had some big moments for some turnovers. He blocked a punt. Did everything they could do to help an offense that was obviously overwhelmed with injuries to the quarterback spot. I've yeah. just been really impressed, Rich, with both of these teams in the effort, in their grit, in their resilience, both coming off four game losing streaks, found ways to win, and it always wasn't pretty. And now here, Utah State's on the road, opening up another can of quarterbacks, and somehow putting themselves in a position to win this game here late. Tyler didn't want to get out of bounds, and he does. Smartly stopped. Jack Howell made the stop. And the 
clock melts under 120. You see that the play clock gets reset as soon as the official gets the ball and starts it to head it towards the spot. It's third down and nine. Yeah, there's going to be not a lot of time. Not a lot of time. In, in, in no time, this my uh, third grade math education adds up. Second and two. Yeah, you want to really snap it. And Tyler stays up, but he's down, and you can see Ball the game. play clock has not restarted. The game clock is under 40. This game belongs to Utah State. What a battle this was of attrition. They were without their starting quarterback, Logan Bonner. He's out for the year. Jay Norvell was down to a walk-on redshirt freshman to start this game. Utah State lost two quarterbacks tonight. Cooper Lega with a concussion and Levi Williams with a heel injury. And so Bishop Davenport, a freshman, comes off the bench wasn't there in the spring got there in the summer not a lot of reps in the fall and he guides Utah State to a road win and in the Mountain West that ain't easy hats off to both of these teams and both of these staffs these players are grinding it out incredible job by Blake Anderson and hats off to Jay Norvell all right six straight Wins. You know, Utah State, even though they had that rough start, look at them right now, 2-1. and one. They have a win over Air Force. Remember, they finished the season at Boise State on CBS. They go to Wyoming next week. Blake Anderson said, I felt like we were at a fragile point. So that win last week was a huge win for us. He said the kids were frustrated and down, but they showed up every day. He said, I talked to him about their hard work needing to show up on the field, and here they are on the road with tremendous adversity and find a way to get it done. And who knows more about adversity than Blake Anderson, and boy, has his team adopted his resilience. Yeah, you saw that hug with Bishop Davenport. Let's go down to Sherry Burris. Sherry? Well, Coach, not one, not two, not three, but four. Bishop Davenport lead you guys to a win. What did you just say when you embraced him now? I told him I love him, proud of him. We'll get him ready. You know, he had to come in. He really has gotten zero reps in practice other than just routes on air and Pascal, you know, nothing, nothing really that mattered. And thought he did a phenomenal job of coming in, being poised and doing what we needed to do to win. What does it say about your team as a whole that even on the defensive side without a quarterback, they never let up? Yeah, defense played great. I mean, you keep us in the game and hold them to 13, you're, you're going to have a chance to win every week. We overcame a couple boneheaded plays, but defense played great, and the freshman stepped in, and the guys lifted him up. That's a, that's, that's a night that you'll remember, I promise you. Back-to-back -back wins now for you. How do you yeah. guys ride this momentum? Yeah, it's huge. Just kind of keep building on it. Hopefully we learn a lot of lessons. We survived a couple really critical mistakes. We haven't given up a block punt in forever, and we made a mistake there, and the defense bailed us out. I hope we learn a lot from this and just continue to go, grow in confidence and get some guys healthy as well. Well, congratulations on the win. Enjoy. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Terrific job tonight from you. Utah State riding the, uh, the legs and the arm of Bishop Davenport. That's a heck of a win. And, you know, maybe they can keep this momentum. It's a tough road assignment next week at Wyoming. He said we're a program built on relationships. And in a time and an era with the transfer portal where you have new faces and new places, you can't say enough about how tight of a program and a tight-knit group that this Utah State team is. And <laughs> if you're a bet man, put some money on Utah State. They've turned a quarter and looking for brighter times. Utah State wins it for Aaron Taylor, Sherry Burris, our entire CBS crew. I'm Rich Waltz, presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. After the break, on to Las Vegas, Air Force and UNLV with Carter Blackburn and Tom Herman. So long from Fort Collins.